On the famous Ford test track at Durban, Michigan, designers, engineers, and test drivers have been working ever since BJ Day, working to create a completely new automobile. Rain or shine, hot or cold, day and night, month after month, the Ford Motor Company has been working on plans and conducting special tests for a car that could be truly acclaimed, new from the ground up. A car with every feature engineered in balance to produce a brilliant new creation in the automotive world. Day after day, hundreds and hundreds of tests and experiments were made in the constant quest of a goal. A quest for proof that here was the engineering achievement supreme, combining riding comfort, beauty, durability, and economy. Proof of new safety, new power, and unrivaled roadability. Tests that mean proof, absolute proof, that the new Ford is a car created for leadership. in your future. The achievement supreme in modern automotive styling. Beauty combined with comfort, safety, and performance. The new four-door custom sedan is a perfect example of the balanced engineering built into every model of the new 1949 line. For example, the longer, lower streamlined, completely new appearance of a car is a styling achievement combined with practical engineering. The new Ford is a full four inches lower, but the road clearance is practically the same. The interior, or seating space, is larger and a full five inches forward. The rear seat is well ahead of the rear axle, giving all passengers a truly cradled midship ride. The luxurious interior is designed and engineered for lounge car comfort. The richly upholstered seats are more comfortable because they are wider by far than ever before. The floors are flatter for comfort and convenience in entering or leaving the car. There's more seating room, more shoulder room and still more headroom too. And the front seat is a full eight inches wider to ensure complete comfort when two people are sitting with the driver. Yes, the Ford in your future is new, all new. It's designed to give the ultimate in comfort more style and beauty than has ever been attained in a low-priced car. The 1949 Ford Custom Station Wagon II is dramatically new from the ground up. The handsomely streamlined body is steel, all steel, under the richly paneled wood. The entire car is a combination of new safety and new beauty. For the roof, too, is safety steel welded to the all-steel body. Smart two-door styling provides doors that are massive and extra wide for easy entrance and exit. Here again is engineered convenience. For greater convenience and extra storage space, the spare tire is mounted on the luggage gate, and the rear seat can be easily removed to provide extra storage space. This model is the enchantingly new Ford Club Coupe, one of the most popular models in the entire 49 line. This is particularly true when there are children in the family. The space back of the driver is equipped with a cozy and comfortable seat, safe for children away from doors and latches. In fact, safety and comfort is a major part of the balanced engineering in every feature of the car. For example, one of the most outstanding and pleasing of these features is the revolutionary new fresh air ventilating system. With this three-way system, air from the outside is taken in through large air scoops, conditioned for comfort, and then circulated throughout the car. Thus, the air inside the car is always abundant and fresh, continuously changing under gentle pressure, eliminating fogging windows and uncomfortable drafts. In the 49 Ford, year-round passenger comfort is provided by this new fresh air ventilating system, an exclusive feature available in all new models. Other features include luxurious interior appointments, like the attractive instrument panel, newly designed for complete driver convenience. The instruments, grouped directly in front of the driver, can be easily seen through the steering wheel by day, as well as by night when the new black light illuminates the dials without the slightest possible glare. The interior light switch is located for greater convenience too. It's on the left side, just above the driver's shoulder. And even the new door latches have been thoughtfully designed for greater safety and convenience. And what's more, 
It's impossible to lock yourself out of the new Ford because the last door to be closed must be locked by key. And speaking of features, the beautiful new Ford Business Coupe has an almost unbelievable capacity for storage. Traveling businessmen appreciate the extra large carrying space back of the seat. Over 25 cubic feet of space for sample cases and other business equipment. Here again is a car completely engineered to a purpose. Yet with the same ultra smartness and styling found in every model in the line. Another brilliant model is the Ford two-door sedan. Here again is new, smart, longer, lower streamlined styling. The luggage compartment of the Ford in your future is larger, much larger. In fact, the deep deck luggage locker has 28 and a half cubic feet of completely usable space. Luggage for the entire family can be conveniently stored for travel. Yet the spare tire is always accessible. Combining practical convenience with new style and beauty. The gay new Ford Custom Convertible is the car of the year for youth at any age. Its dashing style and graceful lines make it a showpiece, even in the smartest settings. And the automatic easy latch top moves up or down in effortless seconds, quickly turning a snug sedan into a breezy sunshine car. The Ford in your future also gives you a substantial increase in economy and performance. The six-cylinder engine is the newest, most modern of all the sixes in the low price field. It is a brand new 95 horsepower engine designed for increased economy of operation. And the famous for smoothness V8 engine has been improved to provide the greatest operating economy, plus the liveliest, peppiest performance in its history. Each of these powerful engines is an optional choice. Each is available in every model in the 1949 line of Ford cars. And out on the highway, the Ford in your future with its lower, safer center of gravity provides a smooth midship ride. Quiet as a whisper and gentle as a summer breeze. Here and here only is where the completely balanced engineering can really be enjoyed and fully appreciated. For instance, the new ease engineered in the steering mechanism and the new arrow straight flight of the car as it rolls along the road. Even in a strong crosswind, it continues to steer straight as an arrow. The balanced engineering in the new car brings a brand new driving sensation. One of the first features the driver appreciates is the greatly increased visibility. True picture window vision for added safety. When the Ford in your future sweeps around the curve, it hugs the road as never before. And the ride is perfectly balanced, beautifully smooth both on highways or byways. No matter how rough the driving surface, the new hydrocoil independent front springs, plus the velvet smooth action of the lubricated for life parallel rear springs, make the ride an unrivaled joy. And the 49 Ford is equipped with new easy action king size brakes. Larger, longer lasting, safer and smoother stopping. Just a light, easy touch of the toe and the car comes to a smooth, sure stop. Yes, the new Ford for 1949 is breathtaking in the splendor of its design. Ultra-modern in its features and thrilling in its performance. A symphony in balanced engineering. A dream of tomorrow come true today. It's the Ford in your future for 1949. This is a story of transition from the old to the new. How an idea, seen first in the minds of a few men, was translated by human brains and hands into a motor car, familiar now on all the highways of the world. The story begins here in 1946. It was morning, the beginning of another day of automobile production. 
The men and women who were to take a major role in the drama of transition hardly knew the idea had been born. It would pass through many hands and many minds before it would reach them. But they knew that any new idea would be taken by them through the last stages to completion. This idea was a revolutionary event. But you would hardly have known it on that morning in 1946. In such small ways are crystallized the dreams that begin a cycle in the transition from the old to the new. coming on those sketches of the new model. Okay, you've started. I have something here now and can show it to you soon. Fine. Let's have a look at it today, if possible. Thank you, Harold. The car is designed from the inside out. The idea is to move everything forward so that the passengers in the back seat are riding ahead of the rear wheels. Then we can bring the overall height down and have even more room inside. So here is the idea. A motor car conceived as a space for the riders. Space that is to be enclosed and powered so that people can move from one place to another more comfortably and with greater pleasure. It's really more than a new automobile design. It's new horizons. It's freedom of movement for the people who will one day drive it and ride in it will value it as a possession second only to the homes in which they live. But that day is two years away. While we've been looking on, already months have slipped by. Not long ago, a few men had the idea to themselves. Now dozens of people are teaming up to develop it. As yet, no one knows what the car design from the inside out is going to look like. But they're dreaming practical dreams on the subject. Dreams that are kept under lock and key. Designers are getting these dreams down on paper, drawing outlines around them and filling them in with color. Is this the car? Is this what it will look like? Well, perhaps the sweep of a fender, the curve of a top, the lines of a hood. Perhaps one segment of a form will develop after weeks of capturing dream cars on paper. at something that may be a composite of the visions in half a hundred fertile minds. This is worth developing. This may be the body outline that is to be familiar on every street and every road in the land. It's a long time now since the idea first went down on paper. The idea takes form and dimension in quarter scale. It's time to shape it up full size in clay so other minds can work on it, so they can walk around it and talk about it. Something else has happened to the original dream. They've broken it down to the fine points, and other people are having ideas on the details. So the idea travels and grows. 
taking shape in the feel and texture of fabric. Taking color from studies of what people like. Studies in fine variations of shades. Finally, the idea is approaching full form. And they spray color on the clay mock-ups. Color and trim to get them ready for the hour of decision. In less than a year, the idea has come a long way. We have developed two full-size clay versions of it. And the men who will guide the production of the car, the men who will advertise it and sell it, have the final say at this point. They have to study the idea and think, how will it look in the showroom? How will it look on the highway? Going shopping down Elm Street, driving to the picnic on Sunday afternoon. How will it look parked in the driveway? How much will it cost? They make the final decision and the idea is on its way to becoming an automobile. But it's an automobile still a long way from production. From clay mock-ups, they go to handmade test cars, hammered to shape on wooden forms. Not as perfect as production cars, but something that can be driven and tried out. Yes, a long way from the final product. But transition from the old to the new has begun. Then a great moment arrives. The shape of the new comes out into the light of day. And now, a dream that was born in silence feels power in its veins and comes to life. They give it a number and a clean page on which to write the story of its life. And they start it out onto the test track. There will be more test cars, dozens more. They will go on hour after hour, day after day, week after week over good roads for speed and bad roads to break them down. Over a road that goes round and round in a circle, but which leads to new horizons for people all over the world.
It was relatively easy to sketch the original idea on paper. But now that it's a motor car going into production, now that its plans and specifications must pass through hundreds of minds and hands, it's being translated into precise mechanical lines on thousands of sheets of paper. These men with their keen pencils will have to prescribe how to line up bolt holes and fabricated steel parts to be welded. They will have to diagram where to drill 900 other holes and profile a lot of odd shapes and angles. Now it happens that you need more than hammers, screwdrivers and socket wrenches to build a car. So more scores of hands and brains go to work designing special tools. The kind of tools that may weigh up to 70 tons apiece. This is one of them. It is designed to press out the shape of an automobile top from a tough steel sheet. From paper plans, they mock up the die in plaster. Then the tool and die men hang it up and use it for a pattern. While their machine traces over the form and digs its counterpart out of a block of steel. As much as nine months time is required to profile the metal die for the roof panel alone. They work these dies over for weeks, dressing them down, grinding and polishing them until they come within a fraction of an inch of touching in the press. What they have produced is something that will take steel strip in its jaws and shape a section of a car body. They develop dies for fenders, for tops, for side panels, and for floor pans. It's hard to remember now that there was a time when the car was no more than an idea. The operation is spreading out. Red ore, iron from Misabe, by the thousands of tons, is disturbed from its primeval bed in the iron range to pass the human bridge and become automobiles that will be familiar on roads all over the nation. Limestone, coal, a lot of earth substances have been dug up and transported to make a dream come true. For motor blocks in molten iron, they start with sand, colored for identification, and more hands and brains get into the picture. Sand cores and molds with human skill to form them into shape. job in machining and preparing the motor castings, human ingenuity has worked out special machines that do their job on the move. Planners and men with slide rules have worked it out so that the castings ride around smoothly and arrive on time for every operation. They arrive on time for one man to drill 138 holes at once. While production goes on, there are men at work training newcomers in the details of how cars are built. Yes, it takes steel, more steel than anything else. In the open hearth, they melt down iron, scrap steel, and alloys. They mold the molten steel into ingots, soon to be rolled into sheets and bars for car frames and car bodies. Steel is the basic strength of the car. Thank you. 
observers are all but lost in production that spreads over acres of floor space, acres of machines, controlled by the skill and knowledge of a hundred thousand human workers. Only the men who schedule the operations know how it all dovetails. The car has to have windows, and there are men making glass, making glass and cutting it to shape. idea has long ago been broken down to 10,000 different jobs on the human bridge. Raw materials pass under skilled hands and precision machines to help the progression of the old to the new. But other hands and talents in other factories team up to produce some of the thousands of parts, the materials and equipment that go into the making of a car. In this task of carrying an idea to completion, every job is related to every other job. Every man and woman is part of a team that is 140,000 strong. A team whose members coordinate smoothly to produce a complex product that will have to perform dependably for people everywhere. <laughs> Machines of the men and women in the press steel shop have to keep moving. They supply not only final assembly here, but assembly plants from one end of the country to the other. to become bodies for this plant, go downstairs into a forest of steel jigs, 
the body box that hold the sections clamped in place, while men with electrodes weld them into one piece. the component parts are ready, there is a fabulous climax, final assembly. Because of teamwork, of coordination between man and man, between department and department, this complex machine will grow under your eyes. Because of coordination, the holes are in the right places, the bolts fit, the parts go together as easily as a dream sketch is drawn. The parts will work together and function together as an automobile. Ideas, sketches, clay mock-ups, test drives on tortuous roads, iron from the Mesabi, coal from West Virginia, sand cores, the skills and labor of 140,000 men and women, everything now comes together in focus. Now is the climax, the final extension and fulfillment of a dream. The transition is complete from the old to the new. The lines on paper are shapes in steel. New horizons and freedom of movement spring to life at a touch. still the journey to the highways of the nation. Thank you. 
years since the idea took form. And now, it is a reality. In two years, the idea is ready for the people for whom it was dreamed up originally. the road unrolls under their air-cushioned wheels, they are not quite alone. Wherever they go, whatever road they take, they have with them something from the men and women of the human bridge, something of the designers who took ideas and put them on paper, something of the tool and dime men, the core makers, the girls who lubricated the steel sheets when they went into the press, the men who cut loose the flow from the ladle when this car was part of a river of molten steel. Something of these people. The skills, the heart they put into their work rides with this car always. Something from the men and women who brought about the transition from the old to the new. Thank you.